What is going on, guys? Vinvin520 bringing you another Gears of War Judgment commentary. Uh, this is on the new map Dreadnought, which is for Overrun. Um, I have yet to turn my volume down. That was quite retarded of me. Um, so yeah, this is the new map that just came out yesterday. Um, it was a free pack that was supposed to be sponsored by Maxim or something like that. And, um, again, my voice is still a little jacked up. It's a little better than it was before, but, you know, it's still a little hard for me to talk. But I just decided I wanted to talk about the map a little bit and then touch up on a couple of previous commentaries that I have yet to touch up on. So, for Overrun, I would say this map is relatively fun. I mean, I played by myself yesterday for a couple of hours and... I mean, it took me a couple of games to finally even get to play this map. I don't know why this game does this, but when you pick DLC playlists, they put you in all the other maps, including the DLC. And I think it's just because of the fact that they're ashamed that they only released, what, like eight maps when the game came out? Four for Overrun and four for Multiplayer. So the fact that... You have to play all these other maps in the DLC playlist kind of bothers me because if it's the DLC playlist, why am I not playing just DLC? You know what I'm saying? So it took me about like literally, I want to say eight or nine games of Overrun to play and finally get into this map. I mean, I guess it was worth it because when I finally did get into this map, it was a very long game. It was very intense and it was very fun. I got to say, um... I like this map a lot, it kind of, even though I hated the map in Gears of War 3, I can't even remember the name of it right now, I feel like it was um, uh, Cargo or something like that, it was the map in Gears of War 3 when you were on the ship, I can't remember the name of it, and it was like Onyx Guards on it or something when you played, um, what do you call it, uh, Horde Mode, but I'm not, sh I don't quite remember the name of the map, but I hated that map so badly, I mean this map kind of reminds me of it because it's obviously... Um, a nautical map, and uh, I think nautical is the right term, if I'm not mistaken. Silence, you can correct me on that when you finally get to see this. Um, but yeah, it's very, it's very, I guess it's kind of balanced. For the Locust, I mean, it's kind of hard to push up on an objective, because they did a very good job of hiding the generators and or e-holes inside of or like behind something. They made it so that you can't just like shoot at it without breaking most of the barriers down in an area. Which is kind of some of the flaws that they had on other maps. Except for the except for the map. I don't even remember the name of it. But it's like you're at a mansion or whatever. That map, almost every single area where the E-hole is, except for the first region, it's very hard to get in there. And so, I mean, it makes it kind of easier for the COG. And if you look at this team, I mean, this team is kind of overpowered. So that's why it was also hard. I mean, they all picked Engineer, and everybody knows that that Sentry Gun is overpowered. I can't stand the Sentry Gun. They need to, um, I think they need to decrease its duration. Its duration is a little too long for its damage output. And I think if they did that, Overrun would be probably a little bit more balanced. And they should make it, when you play Overrun, that you can only pick one well you should only be able to have two of any class at maximum so like there's four classes so there could be two engineers and then one of every other class and that would make it more balanced than just five people picking engineer or five people picking soldier because when five people pick the same character it's it gets overpowered i mean when it's spe in specifics when it's soldier or um engineer it gets overpowered because everybody's just cranking out ammo everybody's just shooting bushkas wherever the fuck they feel like it and you know you can't push up there's nothing you can do without getting killed and in regards to engineers it's the same thing they just can plant you know 80 sentry guns all around the area and then what are you going to do one thing i also find a very unfair about the sentry gun in this mode is that you can plant it on top of specific barriers. That is not fair. Especially if you're on a piece of cover and that barrier, it, you know, especially if you're on a piece of cover and then somebody plants the sentry gun on the barrier that you are on or whatever. Because, I mean, you know, you have the potential to get shot while you're just sitting there and it's, it's not fair. 
It's something that I think they need to address and they need to work on. And I don't know if anybody else has a problem with it, but that's something that like really annoys me. But um, wow, I actually went for a good five minutes on that. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about some other, you know, things uh, that I meant to talk about. It, it was back when I made the commentary about my um, run-ins with law enforcement and stuff like that. And I just gave brief stories about what happened. But I had about two more stories, and I kind of wanted to talk about them today because this commentary is kind of, or this gameplay was kind of long. It's only half of the gameplay. It's just the locust attack on the generators and stuff like that. But I figured this was long enough, and you got to see the whole map, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about when I was about 14 years old, um, when I was a freshman in high school, this was maybe the first three months of high school, if I'm not mistaken. Probably in December, I want to say that this happened. So, um, there was this spot that everybody just called the shelter where, um, where you would get the bus after school because all the kids would go there and all the buses would go by and it's literally a shelter, like from the rain, from the snow, whatever. So, everybody would just hang out there. Excuse me. Everybody would hang out there and they would, um wait for the buses they would do all kinds of crazy stuff there was always a lot of really bad kids you know i don't want to say i went to a bad school my school was very good but you know the area is kind of like um it's next to like a projects and there's a lot of like really ignorant kids that go there and stuff like that so there was a lot of bad things that happened there and i guess that's why there was you know usually cops just patrolling the area and I'm not saying I was the best kid. I mean, I, I didn't do anything extremely outlandish. Like, I never got into fights. I never did any of that. But, I mean, I'm not saying what I did was right either. So, I was hanging out with a couple of kids that I used to hang out with at the time. One of them's name was Kevin. Another one's name was, I think, John, if I'm not mistaken. And I just used to hang out with these kids because they walked home with me. I don't, I mean... I normally never took the shelter, but I was just hanging out with these kids that day, and it was kind of a bad mistake I made to, to do that because um, they always acted dumb, and they did dumb things, and, like, I don't know, I never wanted to be left out, so when people did dumb things, I just did dumb things as well because, you know, I don't want to seem like I'm not cool or anything around these kids. So these kids were um, uh, just, they were just hanging out, talking, and then all of a sudden they started, like, throwing things at each other, so... There was just like this whole little throwing fight among all the kids at the shelter. It was ridiculous. And then, like out of nowhere, for some reason, I found a glass bottle. And I did not even think to myself that it was going to be a bad idea to, idea to throw that bottle. And I throw it at my friend Kevin, and he dodges it. Like, I was expecting him to catch it, but then he just dodged it, you know. And when he dodged it, um, the bottle hit a pole. And, like, a couple of glass shards uh, hit somebody's car. And there was, like, a couple of cops just driving up um, as I threw the bottle. So, like, when I saw the cops, I just instantly got so scared. I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to go to jail. They're going to arrest me. Blah, blah, blah. So, I walked away as soon as it happened. I walked away as far as I could within the shelter and just sat down. Right? Then... The cop walks up to my friend Kevin, and he's like, oh, so what happened? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm expecting him, you know, maybe to help me out, not say anything. But I guess just, he was probably 14, 15 years old too, so he was probably just as shook as I was. And by shook, I mean scared if, you know, you don't catch on. So he was talking to the cop, and the cop was asking him, you know, what happened, blah, 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 what, what, what's going on here? And Kevin points directly at me. And I see him point at me in front of the cop. And as soon as he points at me, I vomit. Literally vomit. Like, blow chunks everywhere that I possibly can. Because I was so scared that I was going to get arrested. Like, it was. it's just the worst feeling in the world when you think something bad is going to happen to you like that. And over something so stupid. So... The cop waves me over, and I'm like, oh, God, what's going to happen? And everybody who was there just starts laughing at me because I had already thrown up. And it, was, it wasn't like literally just like a spit up. I literally heaved everything that was in me out. So everybody was laughing at me, and then the cop questions me. He's like, how old are you? 
and I'm like, I'm 14. He's like, he doesn't believe me because I'm a big kid. So I'm like, I'm 14. He's like, oh, can I see some ID? So I have to pull out my school ID to show him. And, um, you know, he, he believes me. He's like, wow, damn, you're a big 14-year-old kid. I'm like, yeah, I know, I get that a lot. And, like, me and the cop just make small talk and everything for, like, a couple of seconds because I'm trying to avoid getting in trouble for as long as possible. Um, and then he finally tells me eventually that you know, uh, what I did was wrong. And I'm like, I understand that. And then he's like, oh, if you would have hit that car, he's like, I'm not sure you have the money to pay for it. And now I'm not sure if he was talking to me, the 14 year old kid throwing the bottle saying that I don't have any money possibly because I don't work and because I'm a freshman in high school and because I'm so young. Or if he was trying to insult the, uh, like insult, like the socioeconomic status of my entire family. Cause when he said that, the first thought that popped into my head was, well, my mom is a nurse. You know, my mom makes plenty of money. So I, I probably could afford this, provided, you know, that she helped me out. I mean, she probably wouldn't have anyway. <laughs> she would have been mad at me, and I probably would have had to have done something to pay this person back. But um, that wasn't the case. I mean, I since I didn't hit the car, I didn't really get in any trouble. What happened at the end is that he just gave me a warning and um, he kind of just walked away and then I had to deal with the rest of the humiliation as far as, you know, me throwing up goes with all my friends. Everybody was laughing at me and talking about me throwing up and, you know, that story kind of spread around really quickly. But I don't know. I always took it in stride. I always thought of it as a, you know, if they can laugh at me, I can laugh at me kind of thing. That's how I try to take every bad situation in my life. I try to you know, see what was funny from the situation and just laugh at it because, you know, there's no point in crying over spilt milk. You know, stuff happens and what happens, you know, it happens. That's it. You can't change it. Um, that's something I've just recently come to terms with as far as growing up goes, I guess, <laughs> because I used to be the biggest bitch about certain little stupid things that I probably won't discuss right now. I don't know. But I have one more story as far as these cops go, but it's probably going to be a shorter commentary. It's not really as long of a story, and um, this gameplay is actually coming to an end relatively soon. I'm not exactly sure how long, but um, I guess I'll just talk about, you know, the channel again and, like, stuff that I'm going to get done. So, you know, you guys should probably be expecting uh, a dual commentary from me and uh chrome evolved if you haven't heard of him go check out his page he has very 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 amazing commentaries and he's such a good commentator you know he's so he's so very calm when he commentates and he's so smooth about everything he's very articulate and that's really what i find um you know something that's very good in a commentator and i really think he's gonna go far so you should expect a dual commentary from me and chrome very soon probably by Friday or Saturday. Like I said, I like to try to get the commentaries out every other day from, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then the Let's Plays or Melissa Plays goes up, you know, the rest of the days of the week. And then, like, if I feel, you know, um, if I feel up to it, I'll post um, more Gears of War commentaries just that day. Just It's just whatever I feel like posting. I kind of want to get Dead Space done with so I can start Dead Space 2. Um, and I'm almost done with that. But either way, this commentary has wrapped up, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will talk to you guys later. And I have skipped up on this outro completely. See ya. Peace.